Okay, today's screencast, we're going to take a quick look at Google Calendar and some of the controls and powers you have within this calendar to potentially ease the burden of your life and all the commitments that you have with it. So right now we're looking at my calendar and there's really not a whole lot to see there. But if we go over here to the left hand side, you can see that I actually have quite a number of calendars. That's in part because my Google Classroom generates a separate calendar for every class I'm teaching. So I'm going to see a calendar over there for all of my classrooms and it will show the deadlines and the, the um, due dates that I have inputted into that calendar for my students. Now you'll notice I've got them all unchecked because by and large I'm probably not going to access my calendars very often that way. That's not saying I'll never access those calendars. It's just not going to be very often. I'm the type teacher who generally knows kind of when I have my due dates established and things like that. But wonderful reference to have just at the tap of a finger to be able to refresh your mind when you have made things due. So the first thing I want to look at is sharing this calendar. So I've got my calendar in front of me and I would like to share it to somebody else so that we can coordinate some times. So I'm going to come over here to my Michelle Beregar calendar because that's my main work calendar. And I'm going to click on these three little dots here. And in that, I can change some colors in there, but what I want to get into is the settings and sharing. So I'm going to go into settings and sharing, and we're going to be in these settings a few times throughout this little tutorial. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go down to the list of people I've shared it with, and I'm going to add one more. So I'm going to add LST user, because that's an account I can use to demonstrate this to you. So the Learning Support Teacher Division account. And now I can control their permissions. And this can be a little bit important if there are things in your calendar that could be a potential problem for FOIP. So I can set this calendar so that the person I'm sending it to can't see any of the details of my calendar. They can see when I'm free, they can see when I'm busy, but they can't see busy with what or with whom. They can only see that I'm not available at that time. So do consider, as you're sharing your calendar to others, do consider the FOIP considerations on this. So for this one, to facilitate this tutorial, I'm going to have LST user able to see all of my event details. So I'm going to make those selections and then I'm going to click send and that's going to send my calendar over to LST user so that they can view my times. So I'm going to open a different browser. Okay, so we can see in here now, we can see my calendar on the LST user calendar. And if we uncheck that, the LST user calendar right now has nothing in it. So we're going to add an event in it. So today is October 23rd. I'm going to add an event into this calendar for this afternoon and we'll call it conference call. And let's make that from 12 o'clock till 2 o'clock. Now I can add a location to this. So over here are my rooms. If I click on that, available rooms only, or I can have it include unavailable rooms. Not quite sure why I would do that, but it is there if you need to do that. And then we can go into division office and I can see where there are some spaces available between 12 o'clock and two o'clock. So we could book the polar room or the tundra room, or I guess Arctic's available. All these cold places are available this afternoon. So I can add a location in, and if I click on one of those, you'll see that it's gonna add over here the Bermuda office. Now, it, it also gives me the option to include a Hangouts session so that if somebody's at a distance and can't make it physically, they could join in via Google Hangouts. So that's a choice you have in there as well. Now, I am actually going to remove this from here simply because I'm not actually booking that space this afternoon and I want that available for others to have. Now, notification, do I want to be notified of this event in advance? And I can choose how long in advance I want to make it. And I can go with minutes, hours, days, weeks. So for someone's birthday, maybe I want a reminder seven days ahead of time. So I've got time to get a gift. But for a meeting, yeah, probably the 10 minutes ahead of time is, is helpful, but soon enough in advance of the meeting that I won't forget in the meantime. I can choose which calendar I'm putting it on. I can have it show busy and here's one called default visibility and again you can make something public or private at this level as well. So I would ask again that you do consider FOIP as you are setting the view for your particular events. Guests, now I can add in other people over here. So if it was a meeting and I needed to invite a few other people to it, I can add the guests 
and that will invite them. So let's add my calendar back in. So LST user is inviting me to this conference call this afternoon from 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock. Now over here is where guests can. Can my guest modify the event? No. Can my guest invite others? No. Can my guest see who else I've invited? No. Or I can go with yes on those. Again, that's up to you and really your biggest consideration with that is probably FOIP. So I'm going to go save for that conference call. Now, would I like to send invitation emails to Google Calendar guests? Again, that's your choice. Now, we may want to consider in here a little bit of digital citizenship. So if I'm sending out a whole bunch of invitation emails, that can really flood somebody's inbox. But on the other hand, I want them to know about it. So maybe if I was setting up a whole bunch of events at once, what I might do is have it not send other than maybe the first one or the last one. And then when I'm sending that to the guests, I can send another email or on one of them I can put in the notes that I have sent several events to you. Please consult your calendar to review these things as opposed to having it send 20 or 30 notifications in rapid succession. Again, your choice, but you have the controls on these. So what I like to send invitation emails, I'm gonna go with yes, send the invitation emails. So now I've got it booked into my calendar that I have a conference call this afternoon from 12 o'clock until two o'clock. So far so good, right? Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is finding a time to meet. Because it can be really difficult to find a common slot between two people with very busy calendars. Have you ever tried to do it? What about with three calendars? Or five calendars? It can get pretty difficult to, to find a spot for five different people to meet. But calendar has a way for us to compare some calendars. Now, I do want to point out this is only available on your Chromebook or on a laptop. It, it is not available on the mobile versions. So if you're looking for this on your phone or on a tablet, you're not going to find it. But you will find it on a Chromebook or on a laptop. So to see someone else's available time, though, here's the, here's the hitch. They must have shared their calendar with you. So if they haven't shared their calendar to you, you're not going to be able to view theirs to find a common time. But this one, this is actually an example of a newish feature in Google, and it just really does illustrate how Google continues to improve their product, and we are not continually having to do manual updates or shell out more and more of our limited budgets to stay current. Google keeps us current, and it's one of the real advantages. When Google improves, we all benefit. So let's imagine we're trying to find a time to meet. So I'm gonna go on my calendar, and I'm on my week view here. And actually, I'm gonna switch over to my calendar on Google Chrome, because I prefer to use the Chrome browser. It's just simply the best browser out there. It can be challenging to find a common time for busy people. So I'm on my calendar, and I'm going to create an event. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in my guests. So I'm gonna invite LST user to this particular meeting that I'm setting up. Put a title on it so lst site meeting and i need to find a time because i'm not sure learning support teacher is not around this morning and i need to get this set up so i'm going to go to find a time over here and here are my guests and now it's looking at september 30th to october 6th which is not the week i want to be looking at i want to be looking at this week now we can see on here that Mine are showing up as pink. Learning support teacher is showing up as that kind of orange color. So we can see that there are a few things that overlap here, but it kind of looks like, well, Tuesday afternoon, we might be able to fit something in there because LST users on a conference call here shortly, but then it looks like we've got a bit of gap in time. So maybe we could slot that time into there. So I'm gonna set up for October 9th, and let's make it from 1 o'clock till 2 o'clock. So 1 p.m. to 2 p.m., and that shows me a little gray box down here now where I'm looking at doing it, and actually we could go till 2.30. Let's book a little extra time, and if we're done soon, sooner than that, hey, that's great. 
So I'm going to save that and it asks me if I would like to send invitation emails to the calendar guests. This again comes to that FOIP question where you want to be sure about who you're sending this to and the digital citizenship question of if I, if I have it send this, am I kind of spamming the other person? Well, in this instance, we're kind of imagining that the LST teacher is not here at the moment and I'm going to have this send it to that person so that they're aware that I need to see them and I've booked us a time. So I'm going to hit the send and that's going to send a message off to the LST user. And now you'll see I've got an LST site meeting showing up in my calendar. And when I click on it, it shows that I have a guest attending learning support teacher division account. It has been invited. A reminder is set for 10 minutes in advance. To set up my appointment times, I have to be on the day view or the week view. It's not going to show up if I'm on the month view. I also need to just click on the calendar itself. If I come down here and I click the plus, it doesn't give me the choice to set appointment times. So I'm going to cancel this and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to just click in and now you see I've got a choice on here called appointment slots. So I'm going to call it office time. I'm going to choose appointment slots. I want slots with a duration. Now I can choose how long I want these to be. If I want 15 minute slots, I'll set them up for 15 minutes apiece, starting from 10.30 a.m. and let's go 10.30 to 12.30. So you can see it's starting to block off office time over here, 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Slots with a duration of 15 minutes. It's going on the calendar called Michelle Beregar. Now I've got more options here. Let's see what else it gives me. So I could set a room for this. So I'm looking again, available rooms only. Now boardroom, glacier room, or polar room appear to be free for that. So I could select a room and I could give a little bit of a description. So these appointments, whoops, are to go over your PGP for the school year. And it's going on the calendar's appointment page. I could ha have a location in and I'm gonna save this. So now on my calendar, it looks like this. If I want to see what this looks like to someone else, what I can do is I can come and I can click on this. I'm gonna just go to this one right here that says this calendar's appointment page. And I've set up those times on the 29th. So I wanna make sure when I come into the calendar that I jump it ahead to next week. So this is showing me right now, October 21st to 27th. I'm just gonna jump it ahead into next week. And there you can see and they're staggered because I set them for every 15 minutes. Somebody could come in, click on one of these, and they could replace the office time with their particular information. And when they save it, that one is going to be booked now. And so now you see that that one shows up now as, as not something someone else can take. So if you're needing to set up some meetings with certain people, book off some time let them know that your calendar has some times available to them and they can just come in and select what time was going to work best for them to go over whatever it is you're needing to discuss with them. Another thing we can do with our calendars is we can set up out of office time. So if I was going to be off campus for the 30th, could be a medical appointment, could be all kinds of things. I'm just going to hit the out of office slot and I'm going to let the calendar know when I'm out of the office, so I'll be back in for the last hour that day, but I'm out of the office for that day. Again, I can choose my public, I can choose my private, or I can choose default visibility and that's in the calendar settings and we are going to look at those in just a moment. So I can set my out of office time and when I save it, if anybody sends me a calendar request for that day, and you can see it's reminding me of this here, new and existing meetings during this time will be automatically declined. So if you're going to set the out of office times, do be aware that it will automatically reject other questions that are made of your calendar. So I'm going to just let that be. So there, I've got an out of office day set now. I've got some office time set. I can see on here that LST teacher has booked one of my office times now. I've got lots of things going on. So the next thing I want to talk to you about is some of the views. Right now we're on the week view for my calendar. There's a few other choices in here. The one I want to look at is called schedule. 
And if I look at it that way, I love this view. It shows me on any given day, a quick breakdown in sequential order of what it is I'm going to be doing that day. And, and to be honest, once in a while, I will even take a screenshot of this so that it's just in my phone for easy, easy, quick retrieval. So let's put this back to the month view now. And I wanna talk about adding documents onto events. So tomorrow, I'm gonna to do some Google Classroom stuff with some grade six teachers. If I wanted to add a couple documents for them to have quick reference to, I can edit the event, and then over here there's a little paper clip. I could add the meeting's agenda, or I could add the notes that were taken at the last meeting, or if there's a couple documents we're going to be referencing, it's really easy to add some documents into this. So it's got my recent stuff, and then there's the stuff in my Google Drive, Team Drive shared with me, or I can even upload from elsewhere. So I'm gonna go into my drive and let's just attach this Nearpod virtual reality document. And now when I save it, it will have that attached actually to the event for reference by the attendees on that, on that meeting event. Let's look at some of the calendar settings. So we've got two separate sets of settings here. We've got our Google Chrome settings and you'll find those way up here. That gets into the really broad kind of settings. So that's how your mouse responds to things and your name and the photo attached to your Google profile. Those kinds of things you'll find in those settings. In these settings that are down actually on the calendar screen, I'm going to find all of the settings for my particular calendars. So I'm gonna go into these settings and let's just take a look at some of them. Event settings, the default duration is 30 minutes. Well, if you normally set meetings that are an hour long, change it, make it 60 minutes or 90 minutes, whatever works best for your particular reality. The default guest permissions, the default is to invite others and to allow them to see the guest list. Well, again, that is up to you and FOIP is probably, again, your biggest consideration on that. What are you allowing your guests to see and should they be seeing that information? Sometimes it truly doesn't matter. Other times it does matter. So I can turn off notification sounds. I personally like having those on because I don't want to miss the notification. I set the notification in the first place because there's some odds of me forgetting about it. So I do want it to legitimately remind me. However, if you're not a person who relies on that, feel free to uncheck it. Now on my view options, I can have it not show weekends if I want. I do have it showing declined events so that if there is something else going on at a time when I've declined an event and then should I be cancelled for the one that I had prioritized, I know that there's something else going on that I should be giving some attention to. I can have it reduce the brightness of past events so it's really obvious at a glance which things are in the past and which things are in the future. And then I can have side-by-side -side calendars in day view, whatever I want. I can select which if the week starts on Sunday or Monday, I can set a custom view. I'd also like to address that there's another spot that you can access some settings for your calendar. So if I come over here to my main calendar and I go into those three dots again, same place we went before to share the calendar. I'm going to go into settings and sharing. And there are a few more controls in here that I can set. So you can see I've already got my time zone set. You could do that in here as well. The owner, the organization, it's all good. Then I've got some access permissions. I could make my calendar public, which is really good for a calendar on a school website or something like that, where you've got all your sports teams and different people contributing, but really there's just one calendar for parents to view. That's a great way to do it. So I can make it available to public or I can make it available for all of Chinook's Edge employees. And if I check that, I can have it so they see all event details or see only free and busy. So any any events that I have entered into my calendar, others would only see as free slash busy. They won't see the details. So as I scroll down, event notifications, again, I can, I can control some of those things. All day event notifications I can control. And then there's some general notifications. And so you do have some choices on these things. So if someone is sending out a number of calendar invitations and you know that's happening and you just simply don't need all the emails, you can change that. I leave mine on. The emails are not always ideal, but I don't want to miss something. Changed events. If someone changes an event, 
Mine is set to email me, but I could turn that off if I want. Canceled events, same thing. Event responses, so an event that you can see the guest list on, again, you choose. Daily agenda, that goes back to that schedule view that I just showed you a few minutes ago. Now it says daily agenda in here. On the calendar itself, it said schedule. So a little bit of a disconnect there in the terminology, but that's what it's talking about. And then we get into a few more embed codes, things like that, which I don't think we need to cover in this tutorial. So we'll go back now onto my main calendar and I've made some adjustments into my settings to better suit my particular needs.